Horse racing is back. Another week with John Hardoon from the Raggers and Sheets. Greg DePama here. Horsepower PSN from the Prime Sports Network YouTube channel. Thanks for tuning in. And we're going to be talking about Aqueduct, also known as Belmont at the Big A. How's it going, John? Good, Greg. How are you? Good. And our viewers must be doing good because... Uh, we're on a nice roll here. You're on a nice roll, uh, handicapping over the last several weeks. I don't know, maybe uh, something happened when Chad left. <laughs> hey, <amazing. laughs> so last week, uh, we had that crazy situation at Keeneland in the seventh where a horse that we didn't even talk about because he was also eligible. He was the second also eligible horse, the 14 Bruna, Brunacini, a 28 to one shot. And I believe this is like the very first time in, in us doing this for about 10 years that I could ever recall an also eligible horse winning on one of our shows. That we Well, not, not many of them draw in, but when they, they enter so early, they enter like over a week in advance. So a lot could go wrong. So that was the big upset win there in the seventh. And then in the eighth, uh, you hit... Uh, an exacta actually you had the trifecta in that one because out of the four horses you picked the 12 scratch so you had the three over the 110 and it came out uh with uh what was it the what was the uh, what was it the three one ten exactly I don't know. too many races ago for me yeah actually that was uh a really nice race set up uh the winner of the race was set up nicely because it was a very it was very fast pace so it set it up uh really nice uh, in that one. And uh, that was the one with Irish aces. Oh, but they bet him down to four to five. We like the horse at nine to two. Yeah, that was a big drop down. That sucked. And uh, Paros was the one who came in second. Uh, he was off at eight to, one, eight to one to begin with. So, And then in the ninth, uh, that was another short price, but a win's a win. And that was a five. You had the five in that one. And that was race number nine. And uh, that was the Raven Run Stakes, and that was won by Emery, the three to five shot. So, yeah, yeah the exact the in that one with the three, my You're main squeeze. Well. All right, so there you go. That's what happened last week, and that's what, look. We don't usually give uh, picks here regarding uh, the favorites, the heavy favorites, but sometimes that's what you got to do, and it's better than losing. We're not just going to give you picks just to try to pick races because the odds are better. So, right. and uh, that's where the exactas come in. And, and, and you hit on the exactas on both of those races. So you were able to make some money out of it. All right. So uh, that, are you going to hold that microphone all day? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just asking. Okay. Yeah. See, if I put it down, it's like you hear the hollowness of this oh, okay. huge studio I'm in. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, I know. I'll have to figure that something else out in the future, but this is like an expensive, really good mic. So I don't want, I don't want to get rid of it. So, okay. uh, anyway, yeah, that'll be my calling card. Me holding the mic to my face. Cool. All right. Okay. So we're talking aqueduct and here on YouTube. So I want to remind everybody to uh, subscribe if you can. And when we reach a thousand subscribers, all of these races that we're talking about today will be available here on YouTube for free. But until then, uh, you can uh, check us out over on Patreon. We have the link in the description. It's $5 a month. You can cancel at any time. And we do have a couple of new Patreon members who have joined over the last uh, week or so. We want to get a shout out to John F. Finnerty and Earl Jones becoming our latest Patreon members. So hopefully John and Earl are uh, happy and content with uh, our picks. And I also want to just remind everybody about next week because next week's a big week. It's Breeders' Cup week. And we will be recording on our normal day on Thursday. Uh, we're going to be doing it early in the morning. So uh, we will have two races from Friday's card and two races from Saturday's card. And then we might have a bonus race uh, thrown in there on Saturday because there's so many big races on Saturday. So, um, But we will have... Uh, four out of those races, though, are going to be available here on YouTube. So just want to let you know that it's the Breeders' Cup week, but there will be bonus races you can only get by becoming a member on Patreon. 
So let's talk. Right. Uh, this year is a little interesting. They have 221 horses entered in the Breeders' Cup over the two days. And 80, I think 82 of them are from overseas. Oh, yeah. Wow. So, <laughs> it's the most ever. I think last year they had 60. This year they're going to have 81 or 82 horses. That means they're coming from Japan and Europe and everywhere else. And everyone knows how much success the turf horses have had, the European invaders usually do well so uh you know i'm just putting everyone up on alert that's They're trying to steal our money <laughs> whatever <laughs> uh hopefully it won't make it that much more difficult to handicap we'll find out how many sheet numbers we're able to get on those european imports so but it is what it is it is what it is okay now we're going to start off with race number 10 at aqueduct it's the mother goose the grade two mother goose and uh, the morning line favorites here. We, we've got two of the top contenders in this race are going to be the three Tarifa, a five to two shot. We're proud on board Cox training and the five is an eight to five shot gun song Velazquez on board Mark Henning training. And really in the, in all three of these races, John, it's not like, even though they're, they're the big graded stakes races of, you know, there are a couple other uh, stakes races graded uh, available on other tracks this weekend, but this is like the best card overall. We have a grade two and I think a couple of threes. There, there, are, there aren't any like really big time horses here. The, the sheet numbers are not reflecting, you know, like the, and look, that's Breeders Cups next week. So, exactly. Uh, yeah. You're not going to get the superstars, super superstars. Yeah. But these horses are fun. Yeah. And so, what do you think about those two as favorites? Because uh, obviously, you you want to try to pick one. If you have to pick one, do you, do you feel that you have to pick one of these two? It's a short field. There's only eight horses. I I would use both of them, but I wouldn't key either one of them because I think they're both vulnerable. But if you want to talk about them, let's talk about Tarifa first. That's number three horse. She comes to you from Brad Cox. The problem I have with this horse is that she did run a nine third start out this year. That was at fairgrounds, but she really hasn't gotten better because her last two races were both 13s. She had a 14 as a two year old, but she never really made that big forward move. She never came back to the nine that she ran earlier. She always seems to get bet, even though last time out, she did go off at a big price. She ran against torpedo Anna last time out. There is no torpedo Anna's in this race. That being said, I think she's going to be, you know, she's not going to be more than two to one. And I think she's vulnerable. I, you know, I'm going to play her, but underneath, I like a different horse to win the race. And as far as gun songs concerned, the five horse who's the eight to five morning line favorite. Well, here's the good thing about when you have sheets. If you look at this horse, she never puts two races together. Even if you go back to her career debut last year, she ran a 15 first out, and then she bounced to the 26. This year, she came out, she ran a 10 second start out, bounced to the 15. Then she ran a 13, bounced to the 20. And she ran the 9, bounced to the 16. And now she's coming off of an 11. And what does that say? A bounce is coming up. So if she follows what she's done throughout her career... Obviously, she looks like a bounce candidate to me. Not only that, she's going to be a short price. So as the favorite, I certainly would like to try to beat this horse. Listen, obviously, sometimes they put races together. You know, you remember we were betting against fierceness because fierceness yep. never put two races together. He finally did it last time. I did it. Yeah. But again, he was a short price. So who cares? So yep. the same thing goes with this horse. If she runs off the 11, which she ran last time out, she could win. But. Again, her history throughout her career, she has never put two races together. All right. And by the way, Gunsong uh, was uh, in the same race with Tarifa, that grade one race at Parks, Gunsong finishing second. That was a 44 to one shot that beat him in that race. Yeah, this was the Cotillion last time out. I think they ran it on, uh, on uh, Pennsylvania Derby Day. That's their big day at Parks. And uh, both of those horses did run out of that race. Okay. So let's go ahead and actually, why? No, wait, I'm uh, actually, I'm why, why does it say 44? Is that what that was? The four? No, no. So gun song was 44 to one in that race. Gun song was 44 to one. In wow. That race. Yeah. 
She was the morning line favorite. No, she was the favorite, oh. post time favorite of the Black Eyed Susan just a few months ago. Yeah. That's crazy. Okay. But that shows you Torpedo Anna was so good. So. Yeah, well, Torpedo Anna, they were going to bet. All right. Okay. So let's see if we can uh, make some money in this race. Because, like you said, those two horses are vulnerable. Uh, let's start uh, at the top. And I don't, I don't know if I see uh, either the one or the two doing it, though. No, they have no chance. They're All too right. slow. And We'll move on then. All right, let's go with the four. We'll start with the four, and I don't really see much here because the four ran at twelve, but that was on, which was her last race. But that was on turf. Other than that, I don't she's see much. Slow, she's slow on the dirt. The only thing I can tell you is that Chad Brown took over the race, the training two starts back. So, and both of those races were on the grass. I, I don't like this horse. I yeah. mean, she's slow on the dirt, and even if she wasn't slow on the dirt, she figures to bounce off the twelve last time out anyway. Okay, and now uh, the six looks like uh, this could be uh, a good one. Um, I might go with the six as my top choice. Uh, Life Talk, a five-to-one shot who has improved in all three races this year from 17, 15 to an 11. Do have to be a little bit concerned with a potential bounce situation, but hey, you know, it is what it is. You get Pletcher, uh, you know, the, the, the riders is uh, having a really good meet. Uh, does have a grade two win already. That was at Aqueduct as well. That was last December. Uh, what do you think about Life Talk? Well, this was going to be my top pick because if you go back to her two-year-old campaign, her only backward moves are really on a wet track. Last year, she ran a 16 in career start number two. Then she hit a sloppy track. She reacted to the 22, then right away back to the 14. Bounce to the 16, also on a wet track at Aqueduct. Anyway, this year came out, ran an 11 last time out. She's 5-1. to one, And at that price, this is the right horse to be king, in my opinion. And, and uh, no weather concerns? No, the weather's going to be nice. Now, the other horse uh, that could be a contender here is Headline Numbers. Uh, this is Chad Brown and Irad Ortiz Jr., so it's going to get played big, especially after being placed first through a disqualification, the horse is two for two out of the gate. 16 first time out at Aqueduct. Followed that up with a 13 last time out. So, so far, the horse hasn't done anything wrong. Four to one, big connections with the rider and the trainer. Um, what do you think about headline numbers? Listen, this horse is extremely well-bred, and uh, they probably paid a lot of money for this horse. I would use this horse. I mean, she's light on experience, but she's, you know, she's okay. She fits on numbers. And then the uh, eight is the last horse who also looks a bit slow, Linda Rice's horse. Correct. Uh, she is 20 to one, but I think uh, she's too slow for this spot. Okay. So here are the six. I like the six. I'm going to key the six life talk on top and exact is with the three, the five, and the seven. Six over the three, five, seven. If there's room to reverse them, go ahead. But uh, that's my selection. Six with three, five, seven. All right. And I am going to go six over seven. So I'm going to just hope that it's six, seven, get the two favorites out of there, make a little bit of money here uh, at the Mother Goose. We'll see if we can get that done. All right. Now, for our YouTubers, uh, that'll wrap it up. So again, just check out the link in the description. That'll get you over to our Patreon, and you'll be able to check out what we talk about here for races seven and eight at Aqueduct. And other than that, uh, for YouTubers, we'll see you again next week uh, for a lot of Breeders' Cup coverage. So look out for that. Questions, comments, you know, let us know what's on your mind, all that other stuff, which is always pretty cool. We like to hear from uh, our viewers out there. And again, we'll see our YouTubers next week for our Breeders' Cup coverage.